Oh goodness me. That is tall. Yes, I see it now. That is going to be interesting. Oh, hi, Paul. I'm taking you out to a village in Leicestershire that I've never been to myself before and the reason for this is I just want to set some scale on the proposition that I'm talking about and all of this relates back to uh, the machine that I showed you in my office and a development of that that's happened uh, since we spoke at that time and there are a number of aspects that have come on but the main aspect is simply a recognition that it only is feasible at very large scales. Oh goodness me, that is tall. Yes, I see it now. That is going to be interesting. That is a brute, an absolute brute. You only appreciate things of this scale when you do get sufficiently close to see how small a human being is at the foot. Get the waders on. That is something. Well, this is Waltham Transmitter, and it's a structure that, according to Wikipedia, is 315 meters high. And the reason that we're out here is to look at something that is as tall as that, because the wind turbines that I'm talking about, the baby of the family, will have a blade whose tip reaches up just about 315 meters. And you have to be at that scale. You have to be at that scale in order that the blades will go sufficiently slowly that gravity will have a strong enough effect to do its job on the masses moving inside those blades. So the core idea uh, for my wind turbines is that you'll use gravity to convert the power and in order to use gravity it has to be significant compared to the other accelerations in there and to make it significant you need to make something as big as that. The conventional wind turbine turns the rotor and makes the rotor turn a generator directly and the problem with that is that as you go bigger and bigger in size the speed goes down and so the amount of turning force that you need has to go up a lot and in my scheme it's different we're compressing air we take in air into the blades and we use these moving masses to, as pistons to actually drive that air into a small volume raise its pressure and then squeeze it out the bottom of the blade or the top of the blade as the case may be into a high pressure reservoir where later on or perhaps immediately it may be expanded used to turn a generator well, I wanted personally to see the scale of this thing up close and in actual fact we mentioned in the car, am I daunted? That's not so daunting up close. Um, I can imagine a, a structure that's as big as that. I can imagine a tower that runs two-thirds of the way up there and uh, blades that are a third of the length of that each. That, that poses me no problem whatsoever. That seems to me well within the scope of engineering ambition and uh, I, I would encourage my fellow engineers to share that ambition. My personal feeling is that all wind turbines are beautiful and I think they're all moving sculptures. I do appreciate that very large structures are not attractive to some people, but the fact is that we're in this rather uh, delicate situation where if we don't do something to uh, change the way we, we manage the planet, we're not going to have any of this uh, beautiful scenery to look at at all. And to my view, if you put some very large structures very far offshore, and this is another aspect of uh, my thinking, is that these go very far offshore. They should be in deep water, water that's not 50 meters deep, but 600 meter deep water. They'll be so far offshore that only people who go out in ships will be able to see them ever, even at 315 metres tall. Do you look at it and is it pie in the sky, Seamus, or is, it, is, this, is this for real? No, this is going to happen, Brady. It's going to happen. You've got to believe it. <laughs> 